the, the deal with Joel Berry uh, when you turned your back on him. And Joel, listen, Joel might be as good a kid right. as, as we've dealt with. Uh, over, right. Certainly I have from a reporter's standpoint over the years. Doesn't right. he, say, he doesn't say shit. Right. right? You turned your back, it, it got, it, it was a big thing. It was huge. What well, happened and how did that change you, Ted? Well, let me tell you what. I grew up, I'm old school. And when somebody tells you stop, you stop. That symbols that. That's just how I grew up. Yep. Um, I used to don't have much interaction with the kid um, because of situation that I look at that I've seen it over and over. Number one, Joe Barry was a good kid. Two, I get along well with this coach. Get along with that coaching staff so well. Um, three, I didn't know what the kid was talking about. Because the play, people think I missed the play, and the play was in the, it was up in the backcourt. Well, with with the way the situation was and the game was going on, Joe Barry had been complaining the whole game. Really? See, a lot of people don't know he was complaining. Coach Williams knew he was complaining. Okay, so Joe Barry and I always got along. We used to hug the kid, do it, do all the time. And this one situation that when the play happened. And the way he kept running at me, he just kept running at me. So I put two hands up, like, stop, stop, you stop, okay? And the game ended up 81-80. The game was real good. This was around the, around the four-minute mark. Great game. Okay? And I'm going, I don't want to call technical foul here. But a, a younger official would have teed him up. I'm just telling yep. you. He would have whacked him, yep. okay? And so Joe Barry – with the way that my optics were, I turned my back on him, but I turned my head, I turned my back on him, he takes the ball, he slams it down. So I go, okay, we're even. I went, okay, I, I get it. So, but Roy Williams during that whole sequence never said one word. Roy Williams didn't say one word, didn't say anything. So now Joe Barry comes back over, which nobody doesn't see this. Everybody just sees me turning my back on the kid. That's all everybody saw, that, that, that's all they see. And, and this is about refereeing. This ain't got nothing to do with what you, you uh, that how you, you handle somebody, okay? So he came back and he said to me, and I'll never forget it, Mr. Valentine, I want to apologize. I said, Joe Barry, no, I need to apologize. I don't know what happened up there. I said, all I know is we're in a tough game right here. It was a tough game. And I said, um, um, I'm sorry if you felt like that that you got fouled and nobody got it. And me and the kid, people don't understand on the videotape, me and the kid patted each other. Put the ball in play, we rolled on. No big deal. No. Roy Williams never said one word, didn't say nothing. Okay? So we're in the game and we're going up and down. The game ends up 81 80. Well, all of a sudden my phone started blowing up. You can't turn your back on a kid. You can't, I can't think, what's the hell? You can't turn your back on a kid. I turned my back on my own damn kid. What the hell are you talking about? Okay? So, so I get, so when I saw it, I went, well, what's the big deal? So ACC, Paul Brazos known me for years because he was with Gary Williams' assistant at Ohio State when I came in the Big Ten. So I've known him and Rick Barnes, all them guys. And so Braz tells me, he says, Teddy, it's no big deal. He says, I understood what you were doing, maybe how you did it. People didn't understand it. But I'm glad you didn't call a technical foul either because you said because you did put your hands up. That tell- ruins the game. That t- yeah. If you call tech, it ruins the game. Oh, yeah. It messes the game up. And, yeah. and so I'm going, okay, but now I get all this – I get all this stuff, you know, all this crazy stuff, you know, from, the, from another league and all kinds of stuff. So, my, so I see Roy. I don't see him again until like January the 20th or something like that. And I asked Paul Brazza – I said, Braz, is it, should I go back and talk to Carolina? He said, no, Teddy, we're all good. He says, everything's all good. He says, trust me. He says, Roy understands. So when I go to Carolina, I see Roy. So I go over to Coach Williams. I said, Coach Williams, can I talk to you a minute? He said, yeah. I said, I never realized that my optics was really that bad on Kit. Yeah. And I said, you're old school. I'm old school. I said, I was always taught when an adult tell you that's it, that's it. Case closed. Okay. You've got to learn how to talk because that's how I was brought up. And he says, Ted, I said, I want to apologize to you. And, and Roy looks at me and says, Teddy, we're good. He says, trust me, we're good. We didn't say anything at Carolina. So I said, well, can I talk to Joe Barry? 
He says, sure. So I go out and I see Joe Barry in, in, in the captain's meeting. And I tell Joe Barry, I said, Joe Barry, I said, I, I want to apologize to you again. I said, you need to understand. I said, one day when you get to be 60 something, you get those senior moments too. <laughs> going on. And the kid laughed and I hugged the kid. And I said, I want to apologize. So I hugged the kid, pat the kid, the fans start clapping and everything up. We just rolled right on. It, it was no big deal. Um, you know, like Jeff, no, I, I, I think it's a, I didn't think the punishment that I got was, it was deserved over that because the game is based on refereeing. The, that's how the game is based on. If you blow a call, blow a rule, bye, go home. I get it. Okay. And I kind of like took it personal because the year before I was in the final four and now I wasn't going to be in the tournament. And it kind of like really bothered me. And, and I had, and I admit, I went back to refereeing. I was on edge, basically. You know, I, I was on edge with announcers. Yeah. Didn't want nothing to do with nobody. I was basically like on edge. I, I mean, I was basically, you know, waiting for somebody to say something to me. I was, it, it, I mean, just the way the punishment didn't fit for the situation. I mean, yeah. I mean, it, because well, and the reason why. If What's that? pissed off, that's one thing, right? If, 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 but you're right. The problem, the problem that we see in so many of these situations is one snapshot. Right. One snapshot is. Listen, I've had Demarcus Cousins come at me in the past when I when I've criticized him and him saying, yeah. "You're criticizing me." This was when he was Sacramento, and he would say, "How many Sacramento King, Kings games do you see? All you right. see are highlights. You see right. one snapshot of what I do." Now again. Cases aren't the same, but I'm right. saying you're seeing one snapshot of you turning around. Right. Barry. We have no idea what led up to it. We have right. no idea what followed it. Right. Right. That's right. But but that's the media because we can yep. we can take a still on pictures every time that we want to. So, yep. but since I've gotten older, I've learned not to frown because I came in like a grizzly bear. I learned not to frown. I learned to try not show no emotion. I do. I I learned that somebody will take it, and they'll take it the wrong way. Okay, even though you're in a highly emotional sport, and so I just learned to. It has taught me actually. It is basically has basically has taught me, and I had this conversation with the higher ups, even you know, like in the league, and they tell me, hey. We need you to do your thing. That's what everybody tells me. Do your thing because they know that's one less phone call they're going to get. Okay. Because somebody's got to run what's going on out there when it happens. Okay. So I've had to learn to adjust a whole lot. I've had to learn how to, how to like adjust to when things get tough because sometimes, because I want to, I want to revert back to some ways that is, that's probably not conducive to the way society is now. Because mm -hmm. I see it with my granddaughter, she's 10, and she can mouth off, you know. And my daughter didn't grow up that way, and, and I jumped back. I'm going, I can't believe that, you know. But I've had to learn to adjust, but, but I've told higher-ups, and they understand. And I told them, I said, probably the reason why is because I'm – because I'm one of the older senior guys around. I'm the only guy everybody knows. And I know now that I have to, be, I have to curtail what I do. I understand. I mean, but it don't take away from my game. It don't take away. I just, I just learned how to just, just to adjust to the situations. I mean, to, to understand that, that I've even asked like some of the older coaches like coach K and them, how have they adjusted to the new player. Mm -hmm. See, that's that's the thing is, and when I saw that, I said, oh, I need, see, nobody had to tell me because when I saw it, I said, that didn't, I said, my optics part of it didn't look good. I can get that. Yep. But two, nobody doesn't know, like Paul Harvey, they don't know the rest of the story. And then here comes the rest of the story. But see, to the ACC, I give them credit. They, all these games got in-house feeds. 
and they were able to go back and look at the video and say, well, okay, well, we understand he got fouled here. He ran. Teddy was out of the play. He's over here. Him and Teddy, okay. Did they Boy, talk to the, Joel Berry? Did they talk that? to Joel Berry, Ted? What's that? Did they talk to Joel Berry? I, I think Roy did, probably. Yeah. Okay. I think I think the coach Williams probably had That's a talk. All you got to do. I mean, yeah. that'd be the first the first thing I do is talk to Joe Barry. What 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 did he think of the whole situation? Right? Like he right. he's the one who had to deal with it. And again, like you said, he made a mistake, but ultimately he can he can talk through the whole situation and what led up to it. And you know, what surprised me is that, that you said he was on you that much. Or he was on you guys. Through the whole game. It was through the whole game about him scoring. He was yeah. me this, me that. See, but Joe Barry doesn't know one thing. Back in the day, I probably would have teched him up. Seriously. I mean, I, no, I had teched him up when he was doing all this complaining. Right. But the game was going – it was one of those games that kept going back and forth. Yeah. It kept it going back and forth. And, yeah. and neither coach was saying a word. They weren't saying a word. Seriously. I mean, neither one of them – if I had to do it all over again, I would have gotten to Theo Penson and would have told Theo. Because I like what he told him. He would have told you. That's what I, if I could have got to him, could have got to Theo earlier, because Theo was the one that kept everything calm on the bench. Because when they sit on the bench, yeah. I'd be joking with him during it, especially when he goes sit down, I'd be he talking to him. Yes. You know, so I always knew the go to guy. It yep. was just one of those things yep. with Joe Barry just kept going. He was scoring and throwing by the Hummel up. the go to guy? Was Hummel the go to guy or was he Tuan Moore the go to guy? What's that? I said, was Hummel the go-to guy, or was Etuan Moore the go-to guy on Purdue? Well, I think Robbie, at times, Robbie didn't say a lot. He didn't. I would just get, I would get emotion, like Payne would say, I'd get emotionally drunk every once in a while, and right. like in the Indiana game, right. I had to be checked. I was emotionally drunk. Well, <laughs> so. but, but there's nothing wrong with that. But but I learned one thing about Robbie when he was shooting, don't let him up near his arm, you know. So. No, uh, I would I would get pissed about that. People right. start hitting my arms or start that's landing right. you my start feet. Up I'm going to let you know about it. Stuff. So that's why I never let him get up on his arm. Okay? Seriously. That's, I, didn't let him I need you to start referencing three on three because these dudes aren't calling shit. So please well, uh, pass hey, hey, I didn't let him get up on his arm because if he didn't get up to his arm, he couldn't get the ball to the rim. Okay? So, so. That's true. <laughs> Actually, you got – that's funny you say that because we were playing in Illinois and – End of the game, there's like a minute to go. We're up like two. Brandon Paul's guarding me. I'm backing him down. I shoot a turnaround, and he just barely grazes that. And you called a foul at Assembly Hall when a lot of guys That's right. would be way too intimidated to do it. Keep them off they, would arms, have, baby. they would never do it. Hey. So thank you. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> thank no, no, you no. for calling You got to know your personnel. It was an air ball. No, no. You got to know your personnel. A good ref knows who the shooters are. No doubt. In every game that I ref to this day, I know who the good shooters are. I know who they are. And I know the game goes around them. Yep. Seriously. I know where the game goes. I know that if they're a good scorer, you got to keep hardly no contact on them. Because they'll play their game. Yep. I mean, they will. I mean, I watch all kinds of stuff. Like, I watch good shooters. See, I, I must be a, an addict when it comes to this game. I watch good shooters, and then when he shoots, then guys will just hit him on the arm on purpose. Well, guess what I do? Right. I start calling fouls. Yeah. I do. Or it's like when I they know. poke you in the stomach or, right. or just like be, weird things that can mess with guys Because I start calling fouls because that throws off rhythm. Even though mm -hmm. the ball's gone and, and then I hit you, that throws off rhythm. That's a cinematic. Totally. Okay? Totally. Oh, well, I understand about shooters. I mean, because I had Ray Allen – uh, 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 Paul Pierce, uh, Rip Hamilton. I had those real good shooters. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. back in the day. Okay. JJ yeah. uh, uh, Reddick. So you always had to know the good shooters. And you, um, uh, the Justin kid from Carolina, uh, um, Dan, uh, Green, all of them. So you always had to know who the shooters were. Because if you knew who the shooters were, because the game will run through them. <laughs> so. So I always knew that. I mean, I mean, I mean, things would go depending on how the shooter would go. Yep. Okay. I, I wanted to ask you, Ted, just because, and I'm biased to the Big Ten because I played in it, and now I work that. in it. I, I know, like, if you ask all the coaches, they'd be like, we want Ted Valentine to ref in this league because he gets the calls right. If you ask the players, it's the same thing. Will we see you there, and, and why don't we see you there? Well, 
I think you'll see me again in the future. And the reason why good is, we need that, you. is the reason why is without getting into it logistically, and I told this to people, I basically took a punishment for leaving the league. Basically what it was. Because um I went back I was a Big Ten ref for 34 years. Right. Big Ten was what all I always knew. Oh. My heart always wanted to be ACC guy too. Okay. But I decided that I'd go like to the Big Ten, and I just I just had enough. I mean, like one year, and I, I, I and I tell the truth. My last year, they gave me I can name the games: Michigan, Northwestern. Tough game, overtime. Game was one of those ones that it was like a needle on thread, you know, because you can have ability, but sometimes, you know what, you got, you need some help out in the wings too sometimes, you know, like in these games. I mean, these games aren't easy, okay? Yeah, no. And, and Is this the Northwestern game where they clinch to go to the NCAA tournament, where they throw uh, the full court pass or uh, a different one? No, that was a no. Me. No, it, it, it was that. when okay. Beeline was coaching them. The game went overtime in the first round of the Big Ten tournament. Oh, okay. The game went, game went overtime. It was a few years ago. I don't know, but wait, with 80 – I've been out of the league. Um, is it 2015, maybe? Yeah, something like that. Yeah. So, so the game was going back and forth. The game went overtime. Game went. Game was something. But Chris Collins went crazy down in the end, whatever it was. But it had nothing to do with me. The next day, I get Michigan, Indiana, again, Old Depot, in Michigan. Mm -hmm. Michigan beats them. Third night. I get Michigan and Purdue. I get Michigan three times in a row in the tournament, in a row. Well, I later found out, we see, John Beeline was my high school teacher in 10th grade. Oh, really? No way. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 10th grade. John Beeline wow. was my high school teacher, okay? What grade, what grade did he give you? C, city teacher. Oh, come <laughs> on. Yeah, C. I was, I was a 10th grader. John Beeline was my civics teacher. See, I, I, see, I keep that story real close, okay? That John Beeline was, okay? And uh, <laughs> so supervisor kept putting me on the Michigan games. I'm going, oh, God, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Then I had Michigan State and Purdue in the championship game. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because I don't know who the big kid was. I had to make a key call. Like in that game, I had to come across the court and make a call. That, oh, I remember. I was there. Yeah. Was it AJ, AJ Hammonds or? Yeah, I had to come across the court. Yeah. Remember that? I had to go I across the floor that. Yes. and get the play. Okay? Yep, I remember. I had to come across the court and then get the play. The other guy was going to let it go. I said, oh, no, we can't let this go. Because he got pushed out of bounds. Yes. And and I don't know. It, was just, it just it all wore on me. And I said, you know what? I can't take this. Because I got, as you get older, you can't, you can't muster up like you used to to all the time. You can't because you don't feel like it. You know, when right. I was younger in the Big East, I could carry games by myself. I mean, this is the way it was. I could just do it. Yeah, here you go. Here you go. Here you go. But I was so exhausted. And, and uh, so that's when I decided that I'd go to the ACC. And when I went to the ACC, well, they, call, you know, because they asked me to come over there. And, and uh, I told them. I said, I'm going to be leaving the league. And I'm going to tell you something right now. They're not going to like it. And it was just, a, and then I, I, I saw what was happening like in the league. I could see, I could see what was happening. I started seeing it with the crews. I started seeing it taking lesser crews because, right. because uh, there were games to get down to the wire and, and I'd take all the, I would mean, just be a, like, God, if this gets messed up, this is going to be crazy. Because there were some games that went to the wire and guys are blowing the whistle the wrong time and doing all kinds of crazy stuff that I just couldn't take in no more. Uh, I so mean, you, I, you just felt, Teddy, more than anything, you just felt like you didn't have enough support. Well, I didn't have enough support, but I just didn't want to be the main guy by yourself. Well, I think that as you get older, you start changing. Because I start looking at, if I start making four, five, six calls in a row, I don't want to hear, there he goes again. There he goes again. No. See, I don't want to hear that. Okay. Now I might make three in a row, but I don't want to be the guy going, there he goes again. There he goes again. There he goes. And they can be fouls. 
Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There he goes yeah. again. So now I've learned leave some chum bait out there for somebody to get it. Hey, you get that. You get that. You get that. Yeah. yeah. You know, I mean, but but it just get tired after a while because you get tired. I mean, if you played any sports and you were a player, sometimes you want some help. That's just the deal. You just, you just, and it's not a detriment to anybody else. Is that I start looking at my age. I'm, I'm 62 years old now. I don't want to, yeah, I can carry a game. I can carry it down to the end. You know, I worked Duke Carolina last year. Hey, old Teddy, here we go. I can muster up one game like that. But I, I, but I don't want to muster every day. up. What's that? Not every day. No, no. That's right. <laughs> you don't want to muster up every day. You don't. I mean, you don't. Because you start mustering up, then all of a sudden is you start making a lot of mistakes. Then you yeah. start jumping in. And you start taking over. And then you make mistakes. And then you look like the ass. You know, so. so will we I'm, see in the Big Ten this year, Ted? Do you think? No, you, you, I will. I will say something about it. There's some. There's something going on. All right. Some people think I should be retired from the league the right way. Okay. Some okay. of them think that after 34 years, at least if I'm going to go, at least go retire the right way out of the league. Yep. I mean, oh, right. I mean, that's how some people feel. You know, um, Coach Painter feels the same way. I know he does. I, I know does. a lot of those guys do. But you know what? But they don't know. When I see them in, in, in these Elite Eight games, I'm not Elite Eight games, but in these uh, ACC Big Ten challenges, I referee them games like the Final Four. Yeah. I do it. And the reason why I do it, because they always go, we miss you. We miss you. Yeah. I make like sure you're that making I'm making your ex-girlfriend jealous. You're, you're making hey. that ex just miss you a little more than they would. Hey, when they're playing in these games, I muster up be, be, because I show them, okay, this is what you miss. This is what you miss. This is what you miss, okay? But I muster up I mean, like for those guys. I mean, I mean, that league year was a great league for me. I mean, because I love the league. I did. I love the league. I, I love the league. I like every coach. It was just one of those ones that it finally came together the way it was. And just, it, I mean, I love Matt. I love Coach Katie. I, I mean, I, I mean, all these guys. I mean, just – because I had one of these good re relationships on the floor with them. Yeah. You know, and, and uh, a lot of people don't know that when you don't have a good working relationship with a coach on the floor, if you can't give him some confidence in you, you're not going to make it. Mm -hmm. You're not. And these guys are video watchers too. These guys watch video. No doubt. Okay? And they watch it over and over and over. And that's why I try to tell these young refs, I even know when I go to the SEC, I have to referee them games. I, I even know when I go to AAC, I got to ref those games. Any games on TV, I got to ref those games that week. If I come to you, I got to make sure I have a clean bill of health when about the time I get to you. Mm -hmm. Because I don't want anything over here hanging over here, bringing it here. Well, you're under the spotlight. No, ma no yes. matter where it is now, you right. know if you're on TV, somebody right. somebody's watching every, every, right. every time. Yeah. So you got to uh, make sure that you're on your game with no these doubt, guys all the time. All right, I, we've already gone like an hour plus. I could go another hour easy, but let, let me hit a couple more quick things. Yeah. Um, one, and, and I think people would want to know this, and, and I want to ask this: is for this season, not enough has been talked about, Ted, about what's going to happen with officiating and officials and assignments, and are they going to keep you regionally? I don't know how much you could speak to this right now, but I assume you've been on a lot of calls. What do you think is going to happen? And what do you think should happen this year to, to ensure safety that we can go through all these games and you guys right. aren't putting yourselves at risk coming down right. with COVID or, or, or whatnot? Well, currently we're taking three tests a week. Okay. There's going to be three. I worked a scrimmage a week ago at Coastal and I took a, I took a test before I went up to, you know, up the coastal. Yep. Um, we're supposed to take a test three days a week. Uh, they're going to try to have the schedule where it's going to be more regional, more like such as I could be in Charleston a whole bunch. I could go to, I could go to Citadel. I could go to College of Charleston. I can go to South Carolina. I can go to Raleigh. Yep. Um, All the, in the car, keeping you yes. in a car. Yes. Um, 
I've asked to be within a within a six, seven hour radius. And the reason why I say that is that, that when I go out, I stay and work in that area because I don't see myself basically coming home as much, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I basically can see that. Um, well, your wife's sick of you anyway, right? She no, did, well, yeah. no, she's going to Brazil in, in November the 1, no, December 1 until January 1. So, you know, see your family because it's summertime down there. Yeah. All right. So, um, I would hope that they would, they're not going to be able to do that for everybody. But I think that since I'm one of the older members, I think it'll, it'll work out good for me. Um, I don't think we'll be working as many games that we did in the past. How will uh, they, how will that, how will they be able to control that without one universal assigner? How can they, they ensure that somebody, again, last year, Roger Aries, I think he was like 16 straight days. How can right. they ensure that? Well, that's not going to happen this year. Really? It, well, because it can't do with all this COVID and because each conference is going to have its own guidelines, basically. Right. And then you got to worry about certain guidelines when you go to New York City and go to other places too. So that's a lot of factors involved because I'm up, I'm always educating myself on this. Um, uh, there's going to be like, I'm telling you right now, I'll be lucky to see 45 games the whole season. What did you do last year? Uh, I worked about 80 something until it got stopped, like 80, 86, 87. You're on pace for you're on pace for 90 plus. So half. You're saying you're going to do half. Half. I'm going to end up doing games. half. I think because of this COVID, I think that with the way it's going to do, because the schedule is only going to come out like two weeks in advance. Yeah. There's not going to be a whole schedule right. at once. They're going to have to go that way. Um, I know they've trimmed some of the rosters. They've had to trim them for this year. Can't use everybody. Um, if you have a school seven times, you got them seven times. That's just a deal, which doesn't bother me because seven right. times is, it's cool. Yep. I mean, uh, uh, but I think that that's going to be the way that they're going to have to go. Um, we're going to have to um, carry a mask when I'm going to run your neck. I think we're going to be able to probably change our clothes in a hotel room and go. Because the reason why is I've come up with myself. If you watch the NFL and all these places, most of these guys are getting this COVID out of facilities. Right. Just about. Okay. So don't even change. I'm, so don't even change in, in the, in the, that's room. right. That's what I'm doing for my own self. Yep. Okay. I'm going to do that myself. Okay. Cause I think the less time you can spend in the facility, the better, better off you are. I yep. mean, like yep. basically, I mean, you're going to have to be, um, it's going to be some, they're going to change some. I would like to see them like go to pods of referees. That's what I like to see them to do, but, but there's no talk about it, but I like to see them put it within one group. And you stay with that mean? group. Yes. Because. Why not? Right. Why not? Well, that's what I would hope uh, because you're going to see some games will probably be worked with two persons this year too. A lot of games, a lot yeah. of, games. Yeah. a lot of games. So uh, um, no games with one, but that's why I would feel that if we would go in a pod, yep. then you could avoid a whole lot of that because that way you know where your group is. Right. And your group. See, the problem I got is people coming in, people here. That's the problem that where I got. Okay. Now you got to drive your own car to the game too. Now, so you got to drive your own car. Hundred percent. Where you guys used to share cars and drive right. trips right. Yeah. Your, yep. from airports. So it's gonna, yeah, it's going to be totally different. It, it, this is going to be different. I mean, yeah. it's just going to be the most total different thing. I mean, it, I mean, it's going to be like interesting on November 25. I mean, right now, no basketball schedules will come out. None. I mean, it's just it, is it we're all behind the eight ball? Because I basically think that they don't know what they're going to do, basically. They don't yet. No, don't. no, no. I mean, um, I've uh, I've spoken to, to a few coach friends of mine, and they don't know what in the hell they're going to do yet. I mean, they're having a hard time like, putting the schedule together and they're right. changing schedule. And so this is going to be hard. I mean, um, I think that I think that the NCAA tournament will probably be more of a bubble style when it gets to that. But right now, this is going to be hard getting there. And then they got a got a requirement like on us that you got to referee at least 25 games to be eligible for, N for the NCAA tournament. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. So so if you catch COVID. You're out. You're in trouble. <laughs> you might be in trouble because if you test positive, I think you what, you got to set 10 days? Yeah, I think it's yeah. 10. And if somebody's in the crew or something happens, it's 14. 
You see, I mean, this is crazy. Like you said, you got to know everything. And with you, you got to know everything in different leagues too. Right. That's the hard part. Everybody's got their own protocols in each league. Yes. 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 I mean, we got virtual, bunch of virtual calls coming for soon, but, but you just got to know what the protocol is and and you got to know what's going on. I mean, you just, I mean, but it's going to change and you got to take a test. Then you got to make sure it gets back. You got to put a tracking number on it. You know, so you're going to be the another, another, pl- I mean, that's the thing, even three days a week, I right. guess if you're working three days a week, that's a little bit easier if you're right. not working six out of seven days, but right. It's going to be tough. Robbie, go ahead, finish up. And then I got, I got three quick ones for you at the end, Teddy. All right. Yeah. I, I just, cause you mentioned the pods, who, who would be your dream pod? We'll put you oh, you're well, obviously in there, but who, like who is that. like the dream pod oh, of officials hey. for Ted Valentine? Myself, my man, Roger Ayers, who I taught. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'd yep. probably have him. Um, let me see. See, Eads is gone now. Yeah, he's not I'm working. Think of, he, 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 he's how about him retiring this early? Come on, he's not that old. Hey, right. Mike Eads. Mike Eads was my camper when I had a camp. Really? Yes, sir. Right? Really? Yes. And you're yes, out sir. him. It's a referee camp. He came to my, my my referee camp was the first camp he came to. Yes, sir, in Pittsburgh. Yep. All right, give us uh, another active guy with airs. Who else? Uh, Ayers, I'd say I could have now. I can bring some guys to have some fun with. I can have right. Ayers, um, either Ayers, Brian Dorsey, because I gotta have fun guys. Yeah, I yep. got to. I gotta have fun guys because I can't have one guy on the crew is like, oh, it's Arcos. I can't be with that guy. You to know? me, I, I think the most fun official that I have I have ever met is Gaffney. Oh, yeah. I, I take him in a minute. But see, but he got all them CDC guidelines where he lived, Boston. <laughs> I mean, hey, hey, I'm there, too. Don't be yelling at Boston. All right. Take it easy on us up here. Although I am. I, listen, my wife. I, I do that. We, we, we may we may have you scout out a place on the water for us in Charleston in December. If I okay. can't. Anyway, we're going to get in the yeah. car, take the kid, take the dog. Kid's not in school anyway. Right. In December, and, uh, and we're going to be looking for a place that's warm in, in Charleston. All right. I'm going to give you three rapid fire questions here, and we're going to end with this. Three rapid fire. All right. Number one, your favorite player to, to deal with over all the years. Who is the guy with the best personality that you knew you could have fun with, shoot the shit with, that you just love to see? Oh, man. Let me see here. Hang on a minute. Hang on. I'd have to say, man, I got probably got a couple of them. Jay Williams. Who? I said Jay Jay Williams. Jay Will. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Jay Will and Jalen Rose. All right. Two guys. Two two guys who ended up on ESPN. They could talk. They could talk. Who's the coach you want to see now? The active coach that you're just like, I know I can have fun going back and forth with. Oh, well, hey, I can think of a whole whole bunch of dudes. Um, I don't have one, but – these would be AARP members that, since okay. we're all members. Okay. I'd have yep. Bayheim. Yep. I would have Shashesky, uh, Roy Williams. Um, let's see, Mike Bray, mm-hmm. uh, Jim Laranaga, Leonard Hamilton. They're all in the 70s. You hit the whole Cliff Ellis. Hey, you might as well hit all the 70s. That's right. We came through it. Tom Izzo. <laughs> <laughs> okay. See, I, I guess they within my group here because they're the ARP members. All right. Who who's the 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 coach who intimidates officials on the whole the most in the country? Not you, but overall, who's the any. guy? I don't have any. I can't think of anybody. Hang on. A who's the guy that they're just intimidated by? Young guys are just intimidated by just by stepping on the court. Who's the most intimidating coach? Well, Again, really not to you. Money. Who would be? Is it Kay? Is it Huggins? No, no, uh, no. Because see, Hugs deals well with the older people. Is it her? Is it one of the Hurleys? Let me think. See, I had on the sideline, but they're always good to me. I'm trying to think where I've seen them get after people. See, I try to think of the guys that that I deal with. A whole bunch of them. I'm I'm thinking more of the younger guys, the younger officials when they come in, who who intimidates them, 
who's that guy? Is it K? Just because I think it's K? Hugs after a after like I think about that Kansas game, and I'm not saying it'd be to you, Ted, but to to people that maybe he's not feeling as much. I think it'd be Hugs. Hugs and get off on you now because I've had 30 year relationship with him. You know, yeah. so I mean, I mean, I've had 30 years of of relationship with Hugs. I mean, uh, when, when I have Hugs, it's yelling and screaming and cussing. I do do just as much as he does. Yeah, I mean, like you have to with for 30 years. Yeah. For 30 years. You fight fire with fire. I think that's the yeah, only way I mean, to do it. And I've never teed him or nothing like that. You know, I just that's, so, that's that surprising. Thing. That's huh? surprising. You've never teed I've Bob never, Huggins. I go back when he had Van Axel in the game. Yeah. That's how far back. I've never had the T Bobby. I've, I've cussed him. <laughs> of course you have. <laughs> I've been up on cussing him. Okay, because this is how he is. I mean, I mean, I cussed him, and we still cuss each other to this day. I mean, when I see him, I mean, but it's just it's just one of those mutual things. Uh, uh, Who do you think you've hit with the most tees? Do you, is there a chart anywhere of, of the guy you've hit with the most tees in your career? I would say the late Skip Prosser. Really? No. Really? Skip yes. Prosser? That's shocking. Because I referee Skip's games when he was in high school. He caught he, uh, he, he, Oh, so yeah, nice time, yeah. time around yeah. you was the reason. He just yeah. said, he'd been uh, exposed to you the longest. Yeah, we see, I worked my first high school game at Skip Prosser's gym. Wow. Because we're from weird. the same area. And Skip was great, though. Skip was like the nicest human nah, being. Sometimes, ever. though, he get that merchant <laughs> marine come out at him. All right, right, all right. Kid, okay? Yep. And I'd light him up, hit him with a technical. <laughs> and then I'd turn around the next game, hit him with another one. Really? In fact, I had him in the NCAA tournament one time. I was at Auburn Hills, and they were playing UCLA with Steve Lavin. And he had Posey and all them guys. I called five techs on his team that day. Did you really? And I had a fever of 100, of 100 sitting under the stanchion of a, of a first-round game. I called five techs. And Dino got it. I called five techs on Skip's team. I did. I called five. I did. Him. I called five. Okay, and then finally, Skip threw out the white flag. He said, "We're going to we're going to stop." He did because 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 Dino because I know Dino got here very well. He said, "Skip, Skip, we got to stop because Teddy ain't going to change for us." He said, "We got to stop." Okay, gonna yeah. keep coming. Yeah, he just keep. Yeah, but I say that that uh, Skip Prosser because I love Skip. I always yeah. did. Uh, in fact, Mark Prosser and. And his brother, I watched them grow up as babies. Wow. Because we're all from the same area. All of us was. Uh, all, of us, all of us are from I the same area. I love Skip. Man, Skip yeah, was yeah. fun. He was yeah, just, Skip was, he had that personality too. He did. Some to him that you didn't always know, but like he was so, I don't know. I miss, he was, I miss Skip a lot. He, a lot. Hey, him and Dino, because we're all from the same area. And I got into college basketball first. And him and Dino would take, they would, they would drive to Notre Dame every summer. And that and that's how they got hooked up with Pete Gillum. Really? Really? Yeah. They would go to Notre Dame every summer. They were the only coaches leave the area. I'd be going to camp and doing all this stuff, but they were the only coaches in the area that would go every summer to Notre Dame. And that's how they hooked up with, hooked up with Peter Gillum. Well, listen, we appreciate you coming on. This was I had uh, fun. way better – I mean, we could have gone another hour easy. I don't know about Rob. Mm-hmm. I, I could have listened. No, totally. I, I could ask a million more questions. Shoot, this is fun, boy. I shoot. We're going to do it again. Doing... Seriously, we're going to do it again. Maybe during the season, we can even do kind of yeah. what it's like this year in COVID. Yeah. You know, everything yeah, going sure. on. And, and sure, I'll share some stories with you about what's going on out there. Perfect. Perfect. And I mean it. I may be down there in December. I may have you scout out a place on the beach, but I don't I will. I don't Valentine money either. So. You got it. We, we well, got I don't have no Valentine money either. Shoot. <laughs> okay. I don't know. I'm just surviving. Okay. But that, uh, listen. But I enjoyed this. This was fun. I appreciate it. I know Rob yes, does thanks, too. Ed. This is terrific. And, See, Robbie, uh, you found out I'm not a big asshole as you think I am. No, you? I never thought that. I I always thought you were <laughs> you were a straight shooter, Ted. I I knew how it was. No. Okay. No. Great. Hey, I I gotta tell you a story. Who Go was ahead. the Doyle? You know Doyle? Timmy Doyle? Well, yeah, let me tell you a story about him real quick. I'll let you go. Please do that. I can't wait. He's at Ohio State one night, Doyle. And uh, they're playing. And they're going back and forth. And Doyle's playing pretty good. Okay. <laughs> He's playing pretty good. And all of a sudden he says, 
come on, Ted, come on. I said, what? What do you want? Okay, because the players are like, that always knew to call me on the first name. I said, what do you want? He goes, hey, man, I need six more points, and I get laid. I get laid when I get back. <laughs> he said, you what? He says, I need six more points. And he said, and I figured you were the veteran, and that – he says, you know our team ain't very good. And you're good. Okay. Okay. This is true, 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 true story. Okay. So I totally like, believe this. No, he, no, no it's it's true. Hundred percent true. Okay. Not He's now. married now. He go to the goal, he get a little ticket, go, score the goal. Okay. <laughs> I did. Score the goal. Okay. So he winks at me. Okay. That he, is he didn't kill amazing. Him, I was so That's now he comes down again. Five minutes later, he very bump and go, boom, score the goal. <laughs> Okay, so, so now he gets six. Okay, he looks at me and winks again. Okay, <laughs> so now game goes on. I say, he's so a nice hand by me. He goes, yeah, man, it's gonna be a good time tonight. Okay, it's gonna be a good time when I get back. Okay, so now, so now he goes to go. I go, boom, scored again. He, he looked at me. I go, that's a bonus. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, Tim was Tim is a clown. He is a total clown. Oh man, he's probably one of the funniest dudes, boy. He was all Ever. funny. I, I visited, I visited Northwestern, and it's me, Scott Martin, and a kid named Mike Bazookas who ended up going to DePaul. We're off North Indiana. We're going up there. It's my June. It's my my first time visiting. I, we might have been even like end of our sophomore years. We were young. We walk into the locker room. We're going to change. We're going to play pickup. And Tim, <laughs> this is the first time I met this dude. He is sitting in a chair in the Northwestern locker room. No towel on, nothing. Leg crossed over, laid back. What's up, guys? I'm I'm Tim. Like, didn't it didn't cover up? Didn't I love telling the story? And he'll love that I told it because he thinks it's so funny. But he he was just like, I'm Tim. This is who I am. Welcome right. to Northwestern. <laughs> and none of us went there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, listen, Ted. We'll okay. let you go. Uh, be safe. Okay, you really, really enjoyed it. Yes, thanks, Ted. Appreciate it. That was awesome. Stay in touch. I'll see you. We'll do it. Sounds good.